I want to have this thing where until and unless the user clicks on yes, all oh. these fields will be disabled. I mean, make two screens now. What is there? Don't show any of these fields. First of all, no, no. Uh, here at this moment, I was trying to hmm. prototype okay. it and see like if it happens or not. So it will happen. Mm -hmm. First of all, is yes already selected? No, no, no. So originally it will be unselected. Okay. So After it's got, it, it gets selected. Go here. Mm -hmm. Selected state. Mm -hmm. And, and then I enable it. Okay. Like, can it be done in one screen? It can be. That's why it depends on the goal you have set. I mean, first of all, why should you not do it like this? If your aim is to just code a time and show the concept, you can do that. It can be done in the same screen, but for that, you will have to create the whole thing as variants and do it. It's too much of a hassle for this. Yeah. All you want to show is, yeah, okay, if you click on yes. Hmm. Oh, oh, one second. One second, one second, one second. First of all, this is you have enabled uh, component properties. Okay. Internal, that radio button has internal prototyping. Yes. How you gave it? You no, no, it was there. For radio button checkboxes, it was there. For uh, text inputs, it was there as well. If you click on yes, if the component has changed the property, Figma doesn't understand mm -hmm. that, take that as a trigger for an input for another mm -hmm. action. It doesn't do it. Okay. So what you have to do is you have to, for this particular instance, you will have to remove the variant interaction. You have to remove it. Remove okay. this. And uh -huh. for the screen on, what is on drag? <laughs> One second. Tap, it should go to. One second, let's just quickly remove this. You have this frame. Tap, on tap, navigate to this smart animate. Okay. okay. Here also, I have to remove the variant interactions. Because Sigma doesn't understand a variant interaction connected to something else. You have to use variables for that. You have to write if okay, this one, yeah. then this one. You have to write all that because Figma is not. Yeah, I tried the same thing in the in one of my warning messages, and I saw that it was not happening. Yeah, yeah. You need to use it. It's yeah. called conditional prototyping. So you'll have to mm -hmm. set something called as conditions. You have to write if else statements. If yeah. yes is in this state, then show this. If yes is not in click state, then show this or hide this. Mm -hmm. You need to write all that. But for okay. simple yes or no, you ought to do so much. <laughs> this is so time consuming. And I mean, you can practice it. It's not easy. You need to have the knowledge of writing algorithms and thinking algorithmically. No, we are designers and we are not born with those algorithms to be to start with. You can learn. I also do it. But this probably I'll do it when I have to give it to developer handoff and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Or I won't, right? The places where I have been using variables is in leadership presentations. I want things to behave like whatever option they select over there. I want the screen to change to that. For that, I've been using variables to define these states and put all them. But yeah, why take all that effort right now when all you need to simply do is this? Okay. Okay. I got that. Also, there's one thing that I wanted to ask. There was one requirement in the brief that Right. There was user flow and then there was, I did not understand uh, what it was. One second. Let me just, did I ask you to write a user story? It has like option D has user story. As a user, I want the onboarding process to be visually appealing, straightforward. Uh, and were given to you, no? Okay. So we don't have to represent it somehow, but just, we just have to. Huh. So as a user, I want the onboarding process to be visually appealing and straightforward, encouraging me to complete it. These You can say user goals. Okay. User okay. wants these things. As a user, I want mm -hmm. the option to skip certain data at entry points. So these are, like, let us say you have researched and you have found out the needs of the user are these things, are these three things. That's it. You have these in your mind. That's it. What is happening? You have to click on. Hmm. 
good lot of animations and all you have done so i have not returned any value over here so only the buttons are interactive so if you click on email nothing will come up yeah no worries yeah that's fine so yeah that that still explains the concept no that's fine some smart animations you have not done properly by the way the fields so basically what you are doing is you are somewhere the fields are like really messed up what is happening here where did you use this field from the text field dark correct the text field here it is 56 height you also use 56 Oh. Yeah, I just, I just, I just. Look like, yeah. See when the when okay. only people exist. So you... I should have used this one in instead of placeholder. What do you mean placeholder? I used the placeholder text fields that has written placeholder in it, label and placeholder. So I should have used that one. <laughs> you kept placeholder text and you manually hid it or what manually i wrote like placeholder text and i wrote here name so what's the point of using the <laughs> library then this should not be how you should yeah. do it right? <laughs> use enabled state label text what is that that's the small thing that comes uh, at like name okay label text so i should have used name. label text right label text if you want to go to placeholder text go here and say placeholder name is what are you changing it to or deepa whatever no, if if the name is working then i will take the name of uh, the label text in. Oh, I wanted to have that. What I did in who is that Vidya, no? Sri Vidya is fine. Huh. Same thing. So I did this, and I can go back to label text and keep it. It stores the value, mm -hmm. right? If I go back to label text to placeholder text, see, it has gone. Mm -hmm. Stop. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So input text. Anudip. Okay. Placeholder text actually should not be Anudip. Placeholder should say. Enter name here. This is placeholder text. Okay. And the input text should read out my name. Anudip. It's not. Oh. Color no. has to be changed. And you have manually changed the color. Yeah. <laughs> What are you even doing? <laughs> yeah, it's because I use the placeholder text. I got that. I like. I can do it. <laughs> change it back again. <laughs> oh my god see the point is never use things because you have to don't use autoloads components just because you have to i mean i know you guys are playing with it that's right is great understand the actual intent why they are there no yeah but this is an honest mistake you shouldn't have used a dark and then if it is dark it has to be dark you have to use a light one okay okay yeah this is what you need to use Mm -hmm. See now that now the text is coming as black, correct? Yes. And what's the color? You have not defined it in the component. That's one more big problem. Mm -hmm. Your component. Yeah, I I manually changed it after yeah. after making the screen. I I was. No, if you like... change it locally, mm -hmm. if you change it locally over here, how will it reflect in all screens? Yeah, I, I did. If you manually go and change everywhere, then what's the point yes. of using a component, <laughs> right? Yeah. You need to go and make your components in that particular mm -hmm. color, whatever colors you want to use. Those you need to use, okay. right? See what is the color which is this dark one is using surface container higher. Now this yes. color needs to change according to whatever you are UI is. Mm -hmm. For that, you can use the theming plugin. Yeah. Correct. 
Hmm? Okay. Okay. Awesome.